Kabuta Museveni, those Salomon Manuel swear that I will well and truly exercise the functions of the high office of the President of the Republic of Uganda, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Republic of Uganda, and that I will preserve and defend the Constitution, and that I will do right to all manner of people according to the law established without fear or favor, affection or ill will, so help me God. and that I will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. So help me God.
of the society of Uganda as it is. And in that way, you may not be able to completely guard against infiltration by the wrong elements. But since it is, the, it is the deliberate policy of our movement to ensure that we uplift the quality of the politics of our country, I think it makes a very big difference from the situation in which we were, where the very people in power were they themselves encouraging evil instead of trying to combat evil. I think this, this is a slightly different situation. You may not be familiar with our program because it has been namely in the bush where many of you did not have access. <laughs> and I cannot go through it in this ceremony, but I can just point out a few uh, uh, salient points in our program. Point number one of our program is the restoration of democracy. The people of Africa, the people of Uganda are entitled to the democratic government. It is not a favor from any regime. It is the right of, of the people of Africa to have democratic government all over the place. The people should be able to hire and fire any government. The sovereign people in the land must be the population, not the government. The government should not be the masters, but the servants of the population. Yeah, 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 yeah. And in our liberated zones, the first thing we start with is the election of the village committees. Because my mother cannot go to parliament, but sure she can she can be of the committee so that she can also make her views hard. <laughs> so we start with the village committees we are here. And these village committees, village committees, Miruka committees, Gomorrah committees up to the district. And then later on, of course, up to the national institutions like Parliament. These committees right now, in our zones which we control, have got a lot of power. For instance, you cannot join the army or the police of, or in our case, we didn't have the police, but we had the army. You could not join the army you could not join the National Resistance Army without being cleared by the village committee. Yeah, 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 yeah. You must get a recommendation from the people in your village that you are not a role for you to qualify to, go into, to, be, to, to be considered to join the National Army. So even our soldiers who we have, or these who are joining us from other armies, we shall have to refer them back to the village. Bye-bye. 
like passing over the drawing. <laughs> so one first cannot be a criteria. Uh, what is a criteria is the character of somebody. That must be the, the, the best criteria. Somebody's character. Is he a good character or is he a bad character? And that can only be decided by the people who live with you. In this case, the village committees. So I was just putting this to show you some work that could be done by the village committees. Another work of the village committees would be to be citizens' intelligence. We are tired of this state intelligence. State, state intelligence is good about what? The state research. <laughs> the state research bureau and the national security. I don't know what and this and that. And that's uh, this. This not work. <laughs> but these committees, we have been using them in the Bolivazi as citizens' intelligence. Because what happens is that if I come to address a rally in the Semuto, for instance, or Kapeka, or Nagasi, <laughs> the first people I meet are the village, uh, uh, are the committees, the Muka committee, the Gomorrah committees. We even had zone committees, which meant a combination of Gomorrahs in one zone. Like, for instance, the Gomorrah of uh, Gomorrahs of Gombe, Nyingwa, this Wakiso, Mende, we are one zone. <laughs> we used to call it a uh, task force zone, because we had our, our units there called task force. Now, if you come and you meet the committees in that area, they will tell you everything that is going wrong in those areas. They will tell you that the Mugachif, the Mugachifs are thieves, so you will know it. They will tell you that the, the people in the hospitals are selling drugs, so you will know it. They will tell you that the soldiers are misbehaving, and you will ask, you will, you will ask them who misbehaved, they will tell you so and so, and you arrest him. They, so that they will be able to be sort of a watchdog for the population against the misusers of authority. So, on top of these committees, of course, eventually we are going to have parliamentary elections so that we can have a parliament which is directly elected by the people. So that we shall have a combination of both the committee democracy as well as the parliamentary democracy as we have been having in the... And this business, we don't want to elect you and then you want to change sides when you are going to the parliament. <laughs> We tried to push our case peacefully 
to say that the Armenians must be excluded from the government, that the people like Mazir who, who killed the people who are forced should be excluded. But our voice was a lonely voice because there were so many pressures from the international community who is not interested in trade. The international community does not care about how many skeletons we have here in Uganda. What they care about is for the road to be open. <laughs> so that so that communities can pass, regardless of how many skeletons uh, the remain behind. So we just kept fight, uh, but we have made, made our position very very clear that we are not going to take part in any government in which criminals are involved. Then they, they thought they were playing just tricks. Even the Okeo said he came here and told the people that by by me signing the agreement. They, they had removed the teeth from the Sarambo. Yeah, I don't like this 
les dossiers. Puis vous devez pas les yoyer. Pour vous dire, ils disaient à vous dire. Je vous dis, voilà, je suis vous dire, bon. Now, these excellencies, these honorable ministers, and these high ranking military personnel, The person who had to keep looking the world to another station. <laughs> huh? Can you imagine? Somebody kills 100 people, somebody kills 50 people, even if you kill the two people. And you say you have transferred him to where? <laughs> to where? <laughs> so the other time when they were saying that the solution of the army was to demilitarize Kampara, you know there was such a talk. That soldiers should be removed from Kampara and be taken away. Well, I asked him why have you taken them? Because whenever you take them, they are human beings. If you take them to the, to the, to the national park, they will kill animals. <laughs> so why are you taking them? The solution is to put them where they belong, in the prison. So you can say someone has killed people here and you transfer them to another station. Killing human beings for the National Resistance Army means that you are killing yourself. If it can be proved that you did it intentionally or with criminal negligence. If it was accidental, then that's a different matter. You can examine that. But that's for the court, not for us. So our program demands complete security of person and also complete security of property. The property of the individual must be separate. It must not be taxed by any authority. The record has said. The body score. The end is small. It belongs to that individual. And even if the individual makes a mistake, and for instance, it's against the, the government or against the NRA, you have no right to take his property. Because the property is not the one who made a mistake. And the property does not belong to that individual, it belongs to the whole family. You can have an, an individual, an individual, you can have a bad head of family and have good members of the family. So that property must be blown to them. So what has been happening in Kampala in the last few days? Where some of the barriers have been trying to visit our soldiers and take them to people's homes and say that these are the supporters of the previous government. So take their property. This thing must stop. Those are wrong with the security in Kampala. And I'll lay my hands on those who are either misleading our soldiers and who are using this cover of change of government to, to lose other people's property. If this somebody has made a mistake, he will need to do it by the courts. The courts will deal with him. If he lost his property, will he take him to good hospital or what? What is the question that you need to do? So the property of individuals must be, must be respected. Now, that is the third point which I'd like to refer to is the question of unity of the land. Because the past regimes have used sectarianism very much. They have used sectarianism to divide the people so that they can use them. If you see a leader who is dividing the people, you should know that that leader is hopeless. Because Division can, has never been strength. Division is always weakness. Now, if you say this, this one is a, it belongs to this religion. That one belongs to that tribe. Okay, what's, what's wrong with belonging to a different religion? And how does religious matters become political matters? <laughs> religious, <laughs> religious matters are matters between yourself, you as an individual, and your, and your creator, God. That's a matter between you and God. You are religious and your aspiration is to go to the life after here. Now, we in politics are talking about the life here. We are not talking about the life after. <laughs> we are talking about roads. That's what politics is about, roads. Water, drugs in the hospital. 
schools for children. That's what we are talking about in politics. So how do you now bring, bring religion and mix it up with this, this business? Now, the road from here to the public house. Uh, if a pregnant woman travels on, on, that, on that road, I'm sure she'll be eating a skeleton. <laughs> now, that road, does it, does it harm Catholics only and forgive Protestants? <laughs> that bad road there, is it bad for only Protestants and not for Catholics? Or for Muslims and not for Christians? Or for Chinese and, and, and not for Baganda? That road is bad. It is bad for everybody. Everybody who is using that road has got an interest in having it repaired. So therefore, the, all, the, all the road users of that road have got one common aspiration, to have the road repaired. Now, if they have got one common aspiration, then how do you, come, how do you become divided on the basis of religion or, or on the basis of tribe, uh, when your interests are similar? Don't you see that those fellows who tell you to, to be divided are those who want to use you for their own interests, not connected with that road? These are a bunch of opportunists who have no program, and the only program is to, to work on cheap platforms of division because they have not been asked to offer, which is constructive for the whole population. For us, we believe that all the people of Uganda are good. There is no part of Uganda that is not good. Lake Katu will get salt from Lake Katu. And nobody can, can say that salt is Ichikonjo, we should not use it. <laughs> yeah. Is that salt good? No, it's not, it's not good. The salt from Katu, is it a good salt or what? It's good. The electricity from Jinja. I think the electricity from Jinja is bad because it is so <laughs> The tobacco from West Nile, is it not a nyanya? <laughs> Don't you think it's a good idea that West Nile is cut off with the tobacco? <laughs> and how about the cotton from, uh, the cotton from Kitugu and, uh, and Lango? <coughs> huh? And how about Karamoja? They have got, you know, the submit there. They submit in Karamoja. So every part of Uganda is useful, every people of Uganda are useful, every people of Uganda are necessary. In fact, Uganda is actually very small, if you know. It's very small. It has got only, only a population of 15 million, and has got only 93,000 square miles. And if you compare this with the Soviet Union of Socialist Republics, which, which occupies one sixth of the human globe, or the United States of America, or Canada, or Brazil, or India. And yet, to some fools, Uganda is too big in their heads. <laughs> and yet, they are the same fellows who are gone groveling before the United States begging for, for handouts of the Soviet Union or, or, or wherever they go to beg. Why do you divide your own people here and then you go to beg outside as well, organizing than yourself? Because a big population, a big country, if you are an economist, a big population means a big market. Whatever you want to produce, you must have people to consume it. You need a big market, and a big market means a big population. You need a variety of resources, and a variety of resources means as large an area as possible. Anybody who talks about the division of Uganda, is actually an enemy of the people of Uganda. We need knowing uh, or unknowing. For us, we pray, we preach the idea of unity of Uganda. We want people to be, we can have our different uh, uh, individualities, tribes, uh, region, but this must not be used in politics. Because politics is a different matter, and religion is a different matter, and the tribes. Uh, like you said, this is a seminary. This one is, uh, what's your name? Mm -hmm. I don't know your name. Ocho is Ocho. <laughs> we are, we are, he's a seminary. I'm a seminary, he's Ocho. But we are, we are, if it now rains, 
Seven, eight. 